nobody choicefully wish to fail. Everybody wants to succeed. The reason why people wake up very early in the morning is to make sure they succeed. They rush out early in the morning. In Lagos, some people go to work by 3.30. 3 what are they pursuing? What is that thing that will make you that 3.30 you're already awake? It's success. But I want to let you know this evening, failure is an orphan. Success have many friends. The moment you begin to succeed, now everybody will like you. Everybody wants to be associated with the successful. Nobody wants to be associated with the failure. But I'd like you to hear this one again. Both success and failure, they are universal citizens of every country. They don't need immigration visa to enter America. Neither did they need a green card to enter Britain. There are failures in Britain just like we have failures in Nigeria. There are success in Britain, in U.S., just like we have success in Nigeria. Very soon, you will be listed among the super successful. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. We are made to understand again that for you to truly succeed, you need the key. Say with me, the key. There is a key to success. There is a key to success. The labor of the foolish man wearieth every one of them, for he knoweth not how. You can be laboring and not be profiting. It's not everybody that is laboring that is making profit. But scripture says, in all labor, there is what? Profit. In all labor, there is profit. So for you to assess profit, the implication is that you must have connected yourself to having the key. If the key is not in your hand, success will be far away from your life. Basically, our heritage in this kingdom can only be delivered when the key of knowledge, Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall set you free. In every area of your life, there are keys. Ministry has keys. Family success have keys. Building a glorious home, you need the key. Succeeding in business, you need the key. So there is no aspect of our life that the key of knowledge is not needed. It is needed. For you to succeed and keep succeeding, you need to keep growing in knowledge. You need to keep growing in knowledge. No wonder. People that were in business in the 80s who felt that they have arrived and they have lost touch with the current key, they have been phased out of business. They have been phased out of business. If you must keep succeeding, you must keep growing in knowledge. If you must keep succeeding, you must keep growing in knowledge. Proverbs 1 and verse 5, a wise man will hear and increase in learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Shall increase in learning. If there is anything people struggle with is to increase in learning. Because they felt they have known it. What do I need to read it for? It's just like you mentioned a verse of scripture. Oh, we already know it. We already know it. I was amazed. I think I've shared it before. In 2007, my pastor just asked me to preach a message. What is faith? 
So immediately I just climbed the altar. This evening, the title of the message is What is Faith? I have not started preaching. They are already preaching the message. Now the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> In fact, they were quick. Hebrew 11 verse 1, they were reading verse 2, going to verse 3. I said, God bless you. Everybody clap for yourself. Everybody started clapping. They thought we would share the goodness. By the time I started opening the message, everybody smiled like this. <laughs> the first bomb that hit them, you don't know faith until faith has defined your problem. You don't have faith until faith fix your issue. So, quoting Hebrew 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Do you have the substance? Because if you have the substance, you will not lack the testimony. But if you are not growing in knowledge, you will grow in problems. So whatever it will take you or cost you to grow in knowledge, pay your own price. Tell your neighbor, pay your own price. Whatever it will take you and whatever it will cost you, pay your own price. This evening we'll be focusing on the force of prayer and fasting. The force of prayer and fasting. I would like us to strike a balance because some people want to be doing prayer and fasting and not work. But I want to remind you, scripture says, he that must not work, let him not eat. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with your soul. For he shall eat the fruit of his what? Fruits has labor. I also know that some people want to pray and God will do all, all the work, both the physical and the manual work. We used to have a brother in, on campus those days when we were in university. When it is getting close to an exam, he will enter fasting. He will be praying and fasting. Fasting. Come and see results now. <laughs> he failed. Eh? It was because of him that they now placed an order that our fellowship must not exceed 8 o'clock because it was being abused. Our brethren were no longer studious like they should. There's a slogan is, God will do it. The Holy Ghost will only remind you what you read, not what you didn't read. God will do it. He brought our faith. In fact, he brought a reproach to the fellowship. In fact, evangelism became difficult because of that brother. He failed too bad. You know, there's a failure that is... Well, it's not his fault. It's the company of friends he had then, you know. Who you company with, what follows him follows you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, hey, I was not a failure. I was leading my class. He failed too bad. So, the slogan, God will do it, started dying small, small. But I remembered one brother. 
He said, read as if it depends on reading and pray as if it depends on prayer. Yesterday we were made to understand work was mentioned 11 times. Faith was mentioned how many times? The same measure with which you walk is the same measure with which you will do what? Have faith. But hear me. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. The reason why prayer becomes a vital necessity for success is that there are forces angry with our success. Forces that are out to make sure that our desire for success end up in the lips. Yesterday we looked at them, forces of discouragement, forces of depression, forces of fear, forces of disappointment, forces of rejection. They are just too many. And beside that, manipulative forces. Forces of limitation. Every plan of God for our life will face stiff contention and confrontation. God said in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 24, Deuteronomy 2 and verse 24, Rise up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand. See on the Amorite, king of Hishbon, and his land is a begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Possess, but contend first. Every plan of God for our life. Our progress will attract opposition. Our breakthrough will attract adversity. For a great door and effectual is open unto us, but there are many adversaries. So every plan of God, your plan for financial success, your plan for marital success, your plan for career success, will be faced with stiff opposition. Stiff opposition. Stiff opposition. Because if that plan scales through, it is victory to the kingdom of God. So the plan will be resisted. They will do everything to get it frustrated. No one that scripture says, surely they shall gather. But not by me. Anyone that gather against you, they shall fall. But you must initiate their folly. Because they are gathering, God said, God said himself said, surely they shall gather. God said so. So you will in, in, put their falling in place. If you don't put their falling in place, they will make you fall. They will make you fall. One thing I've noticed in church, we take our enemies for granted. They are not. Take your enemy for granted. Your enemy mean business. So you too, you must mean business. Any enemy you take for granted is the one Satan will use to rattle you. Level you to the floor. Every plan that comes to pass is a fulfillment of scripture. An establishment of God's counsel. God said, my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. My counsel shall stand. So the enemy will not be too happy to watch that counsel stand. You heard that sister's testimony that was read? They have fixed wedding dates and everything. And the enemy showed up and the whole thing crashed. I 
I'm sure she knew it was not ordinary that there are forces fighting it. And God intervened. And the young man said, I've been observing you. I've been observing you. My name is Engineer so 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 and so. I'm from Engineer so 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 and so. It's marriage that I'm calling you for. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't wait for the enemy to level you before your head will be correct. Don't wait for the enemy to level you. Scripture say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. The plan of God for your life, the plan of God for your success, they are too great. The path of the just is like a shining light. If you succeeded last year, God wants you to succeed more this year. The path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter, that shines more and more onto a perfect day. More and more, more and more. So your, your, your plan for success is more and more. 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 But it must be driven by prayer. It must be driven by prayer. It must be driven by prayer. The reason why it must be driven by prayer is because there are stiff opposition. Bishop Abiyah said, every new level, there is a new devil. Every new level, there is a new what? Devil. But if you must clear them out of the way and move to your next phase, man, scripture said, this kind go at not. But by prayer and fasting. But by prayer and fasting. Oh, I just remember the story of one young man. Almost similar to your, to your, to your case. Got admission to Covenant University. They've done matriculation. Everybody was excited. They have snap picture. They have snap picture. They ate rice. Are you hearing say now? Tia chicken. One month after, he saw a dwarf. He saw a dwarf. That dwarf pursued him. And that was how that young man <laughs> left school. He didn't fail. He left school. He left school. So, in the course of one message, strong man must die. That message, I am going to write a book. He said, Pastor, that thing you said, I want to tell you something. Do you know I was in Covenant University? I didn't fail. I didn't have any problem. I just had one ugly dream. A dwarf pursued me in the dream. And before you know what's happening, I lost touch. And I decided to come back. He just came back. I said, if you don't deal with it, it will still come again. I said, this time around, don't deal with it alone. I need your mother. The mother came. I said, this is what your son told me. So you just have to join him in this prayer. Wherever that strong man is, he must die. And as they began to pray, the young man has graduated now. He has graduated, he graduated from the University of Joss. Can you imagine from Covenant University to University of Joss? Say with me, error. It will never happen in your life. There are forces that have vowed that there are places you will never reach. If you must succeed, you must be brutal about your success. You must be brutal. When I mean brutal, don't misinterpret me. You hear me? Your going forward gives you more joy than any other person. Anyhow, 
people want to interpret it, allow them to interpret it. Your success matter more to you and your family than any other person. So if the plan of God for your life must advance from one level to another level, <laughs> men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray. If you must keep going forward on the platform of success, hear me? You need fasting. The essence of fasting is to build up power. Is to build up power. To subdue. The enemy is not just attacking you with wars. He's attacking you with power. Diabolic powers. To keep you on the same spot. I just remember something now. If you see me the way I talk, don't blame me. Oh. You don't know what I have passed through. And you don't know where I am coming from. After I graduated, it was a struggle for me to do something reasonable. I began to wonder, Lord, what is really wrong? And I prayed a prayer. I will not forget that prayer. I did a three days prayer before our family prayer to cross the new year. I saw, Lord, whatever it is, expose it to me and let it be uprooted. Expose it. Expose it to me. Expose it to me. Expose it to me. Lord, me myself, I was wondering, why was I praying that kind of prayer? Is that the only prayer point? I was just hearing, expose it to me. Lord, reveal it. Scripture says, whatsoever be it, the Lord himself shall reveal it. I was just praying. So after the prayer, my in-law came. He said, ah, your, your parlor is, big, is too small now. The family is getting bigger and bigger. Why don't we think of extending the parlor? So I came out. My father said, I should, I should draw the extension. I drew the extension of the parlor like this. Like this. Like this. Guess what? While they started digging the mini foundation, they dug out a black clay pot containing four six inches nail with a twine and decayed eggshell. I was far away when they called me that this is what they dug that. I said, don't throw it away. Pack it and keep for me. Whoever did it, I will send it to his fourth generation. If I had not taken that action, man, I would have been a local champion. Are you around saying now? I would have been what? Come and see, my 1% madness came out. My prayer is not in the night, in the day. Lerush e koparia! I was cursing them in the day. In the night, I was firing them with the blood. And I'm still cursing them till today. They have not had enough. I said they have not had enough. If you don't pray, your enemy will bury your success. There are some people that cannot rise because forces have vowed to keep them down. Let's read Zechariah chapter 1 so that you can catch a clear picture. Zechariah chapter 1, let's take it from verse 17. Cry it saying, Thou said the Lord of hosts, my city through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the Lord shall comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Verse 18 now. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be this? And he answered me, These are the horns 
which have scattered Judea, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Is that all? Then said I, what come these to do? And he spoke saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judea so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles which have lifted up their horn over the land of Judea to scatter it. To scatter it. Success could not lift him. Because the moment you are succeeding now, somebody will be lifted through you. The moment your success moves to another level, another person will be lifted through you. The moment your success enters another level, another person will be lifted through you. That's why you must press for higher success. Higher success. Your success should not be me, my wife, and my family. No, that's poverty. God said, I will bless you and thou shalt become what? A blessing. Until your blessing level begins to extend to others. You have not started succeeding. So you must fight to enter that realm where you are now lifting up others. This kind goeth not. Goeth not. Goeth not. Goeth not. Oh, I didn't tell you before now. I was still praying. Lord, why? Does it, does it mean that everybody in this family is under a siege? That is my extended family. Does it mean that everybody is under a siege? I prayed, you know, pray, pray, like I said before, Jeremiah 33 verse 3, you shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Look at another thing I saw. I saw something that looked like spider webs. But this spider web has the size of an electric pole covering the entire family. So, in that dream, in that, in that revelation, my Bible turned into a white glazing sword. Just one strike. Pa! The thing started falling. I just woke up. I started sweating. I had it clear. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. That one took place before this other one took place. God will be showing you line by line. Precept upon precept. Whatever is fighting your success spiritually. Hear me. By the blood they will be quenched spiritually. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Papa had an encounter. Lord, why is this church not growing? Why is this church not growing? Now, if you are making effort, you too, you will know you are making effort. Am I saying the truth? Lord, why is this church not growing? And the Holy Ghost told him, come over. I want to show you something. He came and he saw a thick cloud of darkness sitting over the church. And the Holy Ghost told him, began to profess, begin to prophesy against them. And that is how he gathered Bishop Abui, Bishop Aremu, um, was this bishop in Benin now? Bishop Dixon Olorunda, Bishop uh, Boime, all of them, they entered the fast. And before, and when they came out from the fast, they focused on that area. They began to prophesy. They began to prophesy. Tearing the evil cloud. They began to prophesy. Destroying the siege that the wicked. Now, before this time, some people confessed that anytime they are passing through Banawa, they see the church as white garment church. That is what we call evil misrepresentation. Even as some of you are now, what the enemy is trying to do to you is to misrepresent you from people that will lift you. Many of you are suffering it. Misrepresent you before people that will lift you. That's why you must be dangerous in prayer. And as they began to pray, the evil siege was lifted. The church entered. Bam! 
new level of inflow. Growth started taking place. Growth started taking place. Jesus said, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and fasting. So it is through the platform of prayer and fasting that we initiate our spiritual breakthrough because what takes place in the realm of the spirit must manifest in the physical. It must manifest in the physical. Why do we need prayer and fasting to enforce our breakthrough? To subdue forces that are arranged against our life. They are spiritual forces capable of getting you grounded. But in the altar of prayer and fasting, you subdue them. Scripture says, through the greatness of thy powers, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. If you don't pray, you give them liberty to walk. If you don't fast, you give them license to operate. Through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. So every new level of success you want to experience, get ready. Get ready. There are contentions you must also dislodge. Nehemiah set out sometime to rebuild the broken walls. And he had people to contend with he never knew. The ministry of Sambalat and Tobias. He was building with one hand, fighting with the other hand. Sambalat and Tobias were supposed to be working with him. But instead of working with him, they were working against him. So he was building with one hand, praying against them with the other hand. Hear me and hear me well. It's like the church. It's like the church. Do you think that everybody here is happy with me? You are deceiving yourself. Will I pray against them? 1,000%. They come both in form of male and female. If you don't know me, I know. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not do what? They can't survive here. This place is roasting ground. I will build my church. I wish you had followed us to one of our meetings in Canaan land. If you hear the way Papa causes this witchcraft, I mean, what we call witches is not brizo. They come like men and women like you, dressed fine. They enter church. The assignment is to see how the church will fail, how the church will scatter, how they will set trap for pastor, how they will blackmail pastor name and make sure the work fail in his hand. And after the thing has happened, they say, Shebi I talk Shebi I talk Shebi I talk And they have people in all the units that will help them actualize this plan. So when you hear those level of causes, it's for those people. I will build my church and the gates of hell. Every advancing church will face stiff opposition. Every advance, they are everywhere. They're everywhere. Likewise, in your family, if your family must go from one level of blessing to another level of blessing, get ready. This opposition is waiting for you. You must deal with it. You must deal with it. I pity any husband that is always telling the wife, Go and pray, go and pray. She, you know, she, you know, you have the gift of prayer. There is no wife that has the gift of prayer. Scripture say one shall chase a thousand. Two shall do what? Two shall chase ten thousand. The progress of your family is initiated by you and your wife. How much more now that your children, they are growing up. You also ask them to join in the prayer. And as they are joining, that's how the heavens over your family is opening up. Doors of opportunity is coming for you. The helpers of your family, they are rising up. 
you need prayer to advance God's plan for your life. If not, there are forces that have already vowed that you will not cross this level. How much more human devils that are telling you, bless you, at the back, they are planning for you. Human devils. Some their mission is just to be getting the information that they will use to fight you. And every day they are greeting you, bless you. Every day. Daddy, how are you today now? You are blessed, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy you are blessed. Daddy, you are blessed. You are blessed, you know, cross teeth. Should I tell you something? Be careful of people around you. Let me share with you a testimony. A woman suddenly began to have problem with the husband in her marriage. And she ran for intervention to go and see Apostle Leo. As God just, God just did something funny that day. The person doing you is beside you. She began to wonder, who is beside me? The person follow you here. The friend that wants to collect the husband followed her to go and see Apostle. So Apostle said, if you doubt what I'm saying now, give me your phone. Let me call the person now. He collected the woman's phone and dialed the number and the friend was there. He said, bring that phone. There is a text the husband sent to you this morning. Bring it. Let's read it. And funny enough, at that point, she could not delete it. You know, people are smart. Before you know, she bah, the thing enter, delete. She couldn't delete it. They brought the text message. See your husband text. So they copied the number. The number was saying, honey, the woman almost collapsed. Tell your neighbor, do you want to succeed? Get ready to fight. So she screamed, so now you they do me. Now you they do me. Now you they do me. Hear me? The enemy that the devil will send to attack you is the one you can never suspect. You can never. You say, no, God for me, Martin. I know I'm. Now lie, you know I'm half. You don't know I'm full. When Jesus said, Lord, deliver us from evil. He knows the prayer well. A friend was to be promoted. His friend went and said, Oga, I know this person passed you. Don't give him that promotion. Thank God. Say with me, thank God. There are people that have grown beyond gossip. That when you give them gossip, they seek to find out the truth. Not plenty mumus that we have around. When they hear, they begin to behave like the gossip that they had. I hope you know there are people that behave like the gossip. Yes. The gossip they had begin to make them behave like the gossip they had. Immediately the ogre had it. He delayed the promotion. He began to investigate, investigate, investigate. So instead of stopping that man's promotion, he demoted the gossiper. Another sister was working in a flourishing office in Benin. She now invited her friend because she heard that there was a vacancy. In the place. You know, friend, they have friend. Now, when she brought a friend to come and walk in the place, instead of the friend to walk in the place, the friend went and befriend the Oyubo man. After befriending the Oyubo man, overnight something happened. The position they gave her 
was not enough, she collected her friend's position. So her friend was sacked. She came and reported. I said, no be your friend. You know what you and I two they do together. You say, Pastor, we need to do anything. She cannot do that if you were not doing it. She said, Pastor, pray. I said, no, take the prayer points. <laughs> uh, do you know why I did that? I don't truly really know her. So I cannot attest. So that I won't go and kill somebody wrongly. Take the prayer points. Go and pray. Now you know we are not the meat. Go, to pray the prayer points. She didn't come back home. She didn't come back. Do you know why I did that? I'm sure that something must have been happening before that one happened. So, instead of me to pray the prayer, I gave her the prayer, you go pray the prayer. Is it not good? Is it not good? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, fight for your success. All this one that uh, you feel so tired to pray, just like, Shabi is supposed to be three day prayer and fasting. Wednesday here was jam. Jam pack. With them. They don't run. People that we go far, we press further. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now hear me. Do you know why the enemy will want you to pray less? He doesn't want you to go far. Do you know why the enemy will say, take this fasting thing easy? He wants you to remain easy. Now, hear me? Life does not come easy. Life comes with a fight. It does not come easy. Good things don't come easy. Good things come by a fight. The reason why the enemy is against your prayer and fasting life is because he doesn't want you to, to succeed too much. Just remain average where you have money to pay transport and come to church but never to buy a car. Where you have money to pay your rent and never to build a house. Where you have money to travel to your village but never have enough money to give to your family. That's what the enemy wants for you. Say with me, God forbid. forbid. Even when Moses told Moses, uh, Pharaoh, we want to go and worship God. He said, I will allow you to go but I don't want you to go very far. He said, no. This time around, we'll go with our cattle. He said, I will allow you to go, but not with your silver and your gold and your cattle. That's what the enemy is doing to you. And you are cooperating very well with the enemy. That's why your stomach will be telling you, you have prayed enough now. Relax. Take this prayer in easy. Can't you hear your stomach is doing brr, brr, brr. And you are cooperating with it. Should I tell you something? The farther you drive your prayer, the farther you go. What prayer do is to generate fire around you. If there are invisible arrangements created by the wicked, they will be burnt off. If there are forces hovering, the thicker your prayer, the more the fire. The thicker the prayer, the more the fire. Remember, I told you the other day, as you grow in prayer, your, your spiritual life becomes like that of a high-tension wire. Can a bed land on a high-tension wire? The bed will dry up. See this, see this one here? It's high-tension. Can you go and touch it? Who will touch it? I will give you one million. You don't like one million? <laughs> you don't like one million? Should be the Bible say nothing shall hurt me. Can you now see now they don't like one million? Eh? <laughs> Praise God. What prayer do is make your enemy stay far. Your enemies stay far. 
there, there are enemies that have advised themselves if you if it's concerning this person don't go near look for another place from today nothing will slow down your prayer life that force that is always telling you not to fast they will run far away from you rise up to your feet i like you to pray lord rekindle my prayer life rekindle my passion for fasting and prayer are you ready to pray that prayer lift up your voice and begin to pray he said we will put upon you the spirit of grace and of supplication lift up your voice and pray lord rekindle my prayer life afresh renew my passion for prayer and fasting born of every chaff of prayerlessness every yoke of slumber every yoke of slumber any power that wants to make me remain passive lord let the yoke be destroyed lift up your voice and pray say be fervent in the spirit serving the lord lord renew and rekindle my prayer life renew and rekindle my prayer life belly arrow shaton anglele disa leporu tekete liangodo genon takali ado rakatali mende ketelia lord renew my prayer life rekindle my passion for prayer refire my prayer life afresh renew my passion for prayer in the name of jesus renew my zeal refresh my zeal renew my passion just like the psalmist said oh lord thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul longed for thee my flesh tested after thee to see thy power as i've seen thee in the sanctuary every chaff any power manipulating my prayer life oh lord by your fire let them be burnt off 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 renew my passion for prayer refire my zeal for prayer Refire my zeal for prayer. Lera mande agadado shagadadi. Lerindo she kupreke telia. Rizo na kete kete li agadagada. Rebalitu nero legodo regodiaga. Presata landa rada ligo logo dogo rogo dogo zigada. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Some of you, 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 you were passionate for prayer, filled with the Holy Ghost, but all of a sudden now you can't even pray in tongues for two minutes. You are praying in tongues, and you are you are breathing like someone that did. 5,000 meters. As you partake of this communion, God will heal you. I say God will heal you. Anyone here that have lost his prayer life on the altar of fornication, this communion will speak mercy for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. any power sponsoring food in the dream to kill your prayer life i decree by this communion let the manipulation scatter say amen like a believer whatever made you to lose touch with the presence of god i pray for you that by this communion let there be restoration and recovery you shall be fully restored. Amen. By this communion, 
any manipulating force around your life sponsoring disappointment failure and rejection by the power of the flesh and the blood the yoke is destroyed in the name of jesus any altar higher to make you fail i decree by the power of the communion let that altar catch fire now in the name of jesus so shall it be in jesus name we pray from today you will begin to go forward from today you will begin to recover all you have lost in the name of jesus christ so shall it be in jesus name Great.